Welcome back everyone, and we have just made landfall, is that a word? Landfall? We've hit land, whatever, we've found a new island, <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word, landfall, I feel like I'm trying to be too technical, we have found another new island, something up poking on top of that rock over there, this is a mark on my screen, I hope not, no it's definitely on the rock, <laughs> let's see what is about for us here. On what we can find. Um, I do want to try and spend a little bit more time island hopping today. I think we've got that one to get to that we maybe have or haven't just yet. I cannot remember. It's uh, looking at the islands from different angles. Is that whoa? Hang on. Well, I'll tell you what. I was going to say looking at the islands is slightly different, uh, difficult from different angles because you're not quite sure which ones you've visited and where you've been. The home island just just off in the distance there that you can see still need to repair that radio tower but what the hell is this is this some kind of structure here some kind of pillars it's like an archway isn't it look at it another oh wow look at this some kind of like little pool I don't believe it's got sharks in it. <laughs> it's surely too shallow for sharks. Got a turtle there. Gonna look at everywhere here for post-it notes. Oh no. It's not gonna be not gonna be fresh water because it's straight in from the sea there. Um right, let's have a little swim in there, shall we? Let's just quickly scout this out. Okay. I don't see any sharks. <laughs> I don't believe that I do. So let's... Oh my god. Another flag over there. But I thought I saw something just on top of this pillar here. No, I didn't. It was just a part of a reef. The box here. Cannon. Right, let's quickly catch our breath. Um, we don't actually have a hammer. I could probably do with a hammer. Um... We get back over to shore. Let me see if I can break that box open. I'll craft a hammer. Slow going in the water. Do me stamina. The world's a good probably though. Keep bumping that up. Right, let's uh, just grab this here. Smash it up. See if we can't quickly make a... a hammer stone hammer right let's um for now let's just leave the yeah let's leave the axe just here let's pick up this hammer and let's see what we can do eh? is that clay deposit here if I had a pickaxe I could probably mine that for clay Right, let's get down to that box and smash it up. Might be some kind of treasure there for us. Who knows? Come on, down you go. Very difficult to get him to dive. <laughs> oh, this is a joke. <laughs> right, my hammer's going to give out before that box will. Right, let's surface again. Anything around the edge of this building here for us? Oh, whoa, hang on a minute. What just happened there? What? Why am I taking... Oh, shit, there's a shark. Oh, my God. Get out of there. I don't believe it. Hang on a minute. Can we damage it? I've, I've lost the shape of it already. I can't believe that that came in the water and started hurting us, man. Why can't we stand on this rock? Okay, we've lost the shark. Bugger. I wasn't expecting that. It obviously got me sent. Okay. 
Let's just play it steady a little bit now for the next few minutes. There's somebody else that the shark's got. What's left of him? Or her? Uh, right, let's get my spear out just in case here. Got any spiders or anything? Got to be something on these islands, right? I feel like this could be a bit of a, a dud, this island here. Uh, let's have a quick drink. Uh, I should have a coconut. We even get up there. Oh shit, I'm, this is dangerous. Come on, get up, get up, get up. Oh no. Yes, right, there we go. Right, we are climbing up the top of this big rock here. I just feel like there's something up here, you know. Ain't, what the hell is that? Ancient La Lyre? Le Lyra? I have to carry it as well, do I? Oh my god. Uh, I really don't want to just jump. <laughs> ah, man. Right, okay. Let's just head this way here. Can I swim with this thing in my hand? I want to be as close to the shore as possible for shark. Ooh, shark avoidance. Right, go, 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 go. Okay, so this is the only real thing that I'm aware of that's on this island. We can always come back. I can come back in between recordings, maybe. Try and find anything at all. I'll po probably just drop this for now as well. I don't want to carry it around on the boat with me, I don't think, do I? Let's drop it. Oh, God. Right. Let's head for that island over there. I don't think we've been there yet. Right guys, here we are. The island that I was meant to get to. <laughs> I went to that one over there, which is the SOS island, uh, by mistake. You will see that in the meantime though, I have built a super yacht <laughs> because of how uh, slow the other yacht was and how sick I am of just taking forever on a journey. Uh, this actually isn't any faster, believe it or not, <laughs> which is just a total waste of resources. Uh, but I've now got four sails, I've got a roof, which is nice to sit under the roof when we're sailing. I've also still got Wilson, I've got a pirate flag now, and very annoyingly I've got the rudder, which is not in the middle of the boat, and I don't know why it won't let me do that. So that's <laughs> that's not ideal. But here we, are, here we are, anyway, on this island, whatever this island is. Looks like there's a hell of a lot going on up there. But let's, oh turtle, let's go around the outside of the island, we'll stick to the beach briefly, see what we can find, see if there's any notes for us. Um, these little things are weird, aren't they? I don't know what they are. Um, any notes, any bottles, anything like that. I do want to try and get my ranged skill up as much as possible now. I really want to make the crossbow, so the only way I can do that is by been more successful with the bow. So I'm going to try and anything that I find, see if I can shoot, well, not anything I can find, I don't want to shoot like little insects and stuff, but like anything uh, that's worthwhile shooting. Discarded mattress, imagine the stains on that. <laughs> yeah, anything that's worthwhile shooting, I'm going to shoot with a bow and arrow, if I can. I've got here book repellent, got plenty of that already. There is. The hell is, is that it? There is something there. Uh, that's a plane. That is an actual plane. <laughs> right, let's come back to that in a moment. Hey, let's just quickly finish off around the beach here. I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to get distracted and <laughs> go off in a complete opposite direction. Air conditioner? Could do with that, I'm sure. Nothing much. Surfboard. lamp. Okay. I don't think there's too much here for us. I see a blueprint up there. Oh, that's, well, look at that. That's the tail of the plane. Oh, right. Komodo. Right. Let's get the Komodo dragon, shall we? I was hoping to try and get it 
headshot there. Let's try it from here, right? Crouch. God, the sway is unbelievable. Oh, God almighty, look at that. When I was talking about the... I'm <laughs> just missing everything. Oh, bloody hell, man. We run out of arrows at this rate. Right. Oh, God. Right, so I can't quite get the angle of this. No wonder my range skill is so low. Uh, oh, I do have... I've got another arrow. Missed him. It literally went straight under his body somehow. Quickly grab that. No, he's not even. Right, shoot him while he's unawares. Come on. Got him. Oh, he didn't like that one. Yes. So, basically my skill extends to point-blank range <laughs> with the bow. <laughs> Can we get anything? Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, probably take some of the meat. Modo skin, don't think I need that just yet. Right, cool. One successful kill with the bow and arrow. <laughs> with about 17 attempts. <laughs> I am going to get around to the plane, I promise. I just want to um, make sure I've not missed anything along here in my excitement to get there. Oh my god, there's a rocking horse. <laughs> Look at that! Is that old TV? Eh? Where's it gone? Oh, there it is. Rocking horse. Let's just shot this down on the beach. Oh, I should probably be a bit more careful with it, really, shouldn't I? Um, place. There. Can we sit on it? Yeah! Come on! Nothing happening. Right, watch this. Yes! Got it! Honestly, guys, you've got to look just absolutely everywhere. Oh, look at these flowers and stuff. They look new. Um, can we get one? Oh, they're just reeds. They just were white from a distance. That's bizarre. Um, I'm actually going to have my spear just while I'm about here because God knows what the fuck. Oh, shit. Oof, that was lucky. Scorpion. You just hear something. Oh, look at this. On a way. GPS tags. Sticky note. Radio tower. Let's grab these GPS tags. Let's grab the blueprint. We've got plane fuel tank. Trident? No way can we make a trident. going to be Aquaman now, are we? Spider repellent, get in there. I love that. Stick. What happened to this guy? He's got a stick. Uh, lod well, it's not actually lodged to his body or anything, is it? I'm presuming this must be Sam, then. Uh, because we were asked to go and find Sam's body, weren't we? we get up there. Um, right, let's get on the very edge. Over here. It's not fault. And then let's read the note that we've just found there. I've also found a bottled note earlier on too. Which said, oh look at the view here, wow. So we've been there. Been there, I'm sure we've been there. That's the SOS island, that's the other island that was a bit of a dud. But I think there'd be more to that island, if I'm honest. Right, let's take a knee here and just have a quick look in the journal. Um, so we've got a bottled note. I was in the right one in the first place. <laughs> bottled note. Let's just check that one first off. Uh, William's letter we've read. Here we go. Traveller's note. I set out on a solo voyage across the Pacific Ocean, fulfilling a lifelong dream after retiring at the age of 55. Sailing had always been my passion, something I looked forward to for years. I thought I was prepared for anything the ocean could throw at me. I was wrong. Everything started well enough, but then my GPS stopped working. I became disoriented and lost, drifting aimlessly for days. The sea, once my sanctuary, has become my prison. I tried to navigate by the stars, but the endless expanse of water is unforgiving, and my bearings are lost, presumably. 
I've landed on a small, uncharted island. At first, I thought it was a blessing, a place to rest and regroup, but this island is anything but safe. There's an eerie stillness here, broken only by strange sounds at night. The sense of being watched is constant, and it chills me to the bone. I don't want to die here. The regret is overwhelming. I left behind a comfortable life, my family and friends, chasing a dream that has turned into a nightmare. Every day I hope for a passing ship or a plane, some sign that I haven't been forgotten. If you find this letter, please know that I fought to survive. Tell my family that I love them, and that I'm sorry for the pain my absence will cause. This was supposed to be my grand adventure, my crowning achievement. Instead, it has become my greatest folly. Please send help. I don't have much time left, and I don't want to become another lost soul on this forsaken island. With deepest regrets, Martin Blake. Hmm, so that's a new guy, Martin Blake. I've not heard that name before. Um, I was expecting it to be something about the radio tower, but clearly not. Um, let's flash through these, because it did say we found... A sticky note. So there's the code which we've got. Tablet we've got. Here we go. To Danny. Danny, if you're reading this, I'm gone. I found something unbelievable, but it's too risky to explain here. I hid the deciphering book where the sun meets the sea. Use the GPS satellites to track it down. The island's secrets are beyond anything we imagined. A modern pole disturbed something ancient. Be careful, my friend. The truth is out there, but it's not without danger. Hmm, okay. So I have to get the GPS working basically, don't I? Um, discoveries, yeah, cool. Um, right, okay then. We've got the GPS tags now. I'm wondering if that actually was Sam then over there. I'm really not too sure now. Um, let's head over towards the plane, shall we? Oh, look at this. There's the plane. In all its, uh, I say all its glory, but <laughs> not quite glorious, is it? It's uh, half smashed to bits. Let's get this. Elite bird snare. Plane dashboard, here we go. We're getting more and more parts of this plane. Presumably, that's the end game goal, isn't it? Build a plane, fly out of here. Uh, oh, what was that? Oh, small stick. Oh shit, I don't want to... Ooh! really don't want to fall too far and hurt myself, you know. That's probably one way to really get in a lot of trouble real fast. Being super careful. Cool, there we go. Right. Get around to the plane here. Can we get in it? Yes, we can there. Look, so blueprint mulch sack. Organic seasoning. Uh, what's a mulch sack? Is that something that'll be bigger? Like it'll give me more to carry? Oh, no. Manure. <laughs> Shark axe, look at that. Crafting level 6. Trident. Crafting level six. We need to get up. We need to get uh, ranged up and crafting up. I'm stuck. Where the hell do I get out? Oh, fall down. There we go. Right, okay. Can we get up on the plane? Can you imagine that? Oh, we might be able to. Yes, we can. Right, anything that's out there, we can see it now. Look like ah look sticky note. Logan Harper. Got another blueprint here. Jaguar knife. So what are we gonna find a Jaguar? I'm cautious now, <laughs> in case there's a Jaguar about <laughs> do we have to presumably kill a Jaguar? We would like I guess get its uh like its teeth or its claws or something like that, use that to make a knife with. Um, is there something under here as well? Just a rock, that's okay. Up on here? No. 
Okay. Uh, the only the thing was the blueprint that was just along that way there. Let's see if we can get to that without injuring ourselves. I keep thinking I hear something. Maybe it's just the birds. There we go. That's perfect. Uh, plane seat. Cool. Okay, so the end game here, clearly, like I say, is build a plane. I'm guessing. Is that more? Is that the beach? Yeah, it's just the beach. Uh, we've been up there. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, Christ. Jump. Get up on here. Might just be able to keep ourselves away from it. We've lost it. There it is. Come on, Katie. Yes, we got a hit. Yeah, it's sticking out of it. Oh, thirsty. Oh, no. Hang on a minute. Somehow went through its body. Another hit. Oh, yeah, look at it. Headshot. I'm crazy, man. I don't know how many arrows I've got left. I really don't want to... Yes! Get in there. Look at that. Two headshots to take it down. Uh, right. Let me just quickly just jump up here just so we're safe. Just for a second. I need to drink something. Uh, I don't have any water left in there. I don't have a... Oh, God. I don't have a cork. I didn't want to use me cork, but I'm going to have to. Right. Let's get this leopard. Uh, pick up some of the meat as well. Wooden arrow, raw meat. Ah, oh, there we go, right. Leopard teeth. It must be able to do something with the teeth. Right, let's, um... I don't know what else there... Ah, sticky note over there, look at that. This is what I mean, they're just so crazily hidden. Like, how am I even going to get up there to get that? I have to jump? Right, I'm going to have to hold space and get E ready. Nope. Got it. Logan Harper's journal. I thought something was there. On it. I don't think it stung me. I think we're good. Right, that's, this is an awful forest. Look at that. That Datura, Datura tree. You know what that gives us? Datura flowers. Datura. Don't know how you pronounce it. Oh, my inventory's full. Right, best. Uh, Let's get out of here, I think. Um, let's just head back towards near where the boat is. What the f in hell is that behind me? Something behind me there. Oh, it's a scorpion. There we go. Right, done. I always see the scorpions like that, and I always remember... Remember the Scorpion King? <laughs> that movie with the rock where, like, at the very start, he makes a pact with Anubis. He picks it up, and it's like... Oh, Eats the scorpion and but he's getting stung all the times. And then like an oasis like this just appears. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, level three in ranged, even though I missed it completely. I can't quite get the arc on it. Headshot. It's just completely stuck in its face. Oh, missed I was trying to um, figure out its run, but I've completely balls it up. Got it. Wooden arrows. I just want the arrows more than anything here. Um, don't think I've got any space for any more meat. Oh, I do. Right, okay. Let's... Uh, there's the other one there. I think let's get back to my boat at this rate um, and just make a little fire. Note. Another note. Logan Harper, again. What the hell, look at that. Post-it notes everywhere. This has got to be Logan Harper, another one. Right, okay. This is going to be like story time here, guys. I really apologise. <laughs> I don't know if people are interested in in hearing it all or not. Um, oops. But let's... I always hit the wrong button, don't know why. Right, let's uh, Logan Harper's notes. Let's check it out. So we've got that one. 
no, we. No, we haven't. Sorry, I was getting mixed up with Lieutenant Thompson, Logan Harper. Right, here we go. Part one, the crash. If you're reading this, you must be as desperate as I am. Name's Logan Harper. We were flying, thinking everything was fine until that storm hit. The plane went down fast, faster than you can imagine. The stench of burning fuel and charred metal is something I'll never forget. Wreckage is scattered across several islands. I survived, but barely. When I came to, the stench was overwhelming, and the sounds of children crying cut through the... something, don't know, cut through the air, maybe? It's been two days since the crash. The plane is still smoking, too dangerous to go near. I found a few other survivors, a woman and three kids. I haven't bothered to learn their names yet. They look at me like I'm supposed to save them, and I resent it. Their fear is palpable. The kids' constant crying pierces the air, and the sight of their terrified faces smeared with dirt and tears makes my stomach churn. <laughs> Sounds like a nice block. Right after the crash, I stumbled across the wreckage and bodies. The sight and smell made me puke. The acrid taste of bile lingering as I tried to gather my senses. My short-term memory is shot. I can't remember where we took off from or where we were heading. It's all a blur. I have a nasty concussion and my head feels like it's splitting open. Only the long-term details stick. My wife, my family back home. Their faces are etched in my mind. A cruel reminder of what I've lost. I miss them terribly. The loneliness is suffocating. Okay, part two, the struggle. It's been six days since the crash. My head still throbs from the concussion and the short-term memory loss is maddening. I have to rely on the woman. I've overheard her name is Claire and the kids more than I'd like. They seem to think I'm their leader, but I can barely keep myself together. The stench of the wreckage hasn't faded. Every time I catch a whiff, it brings me back to those first moments, to the bodies and the blood, I'm guessing. <laughs> the thumb is always in the way. The blood. I'm trying to piece together what happened, but everything's still a blur. The kids cry less now, but their eyes are filled with a silent plea I'm not equipped to answer. Claire is doing her best to keep the kids calm. She comforts them, whispers reassurances. It's admirable, but it feels pointless. We're strangers, thrown together by fate, with no idea how to survive this place. I miss my family, but thinking about them feels like a luxury I can't afford right now. I've noticed Claire watching me. She wants to talk, to make plans, but I avoid it. I can't afford to get attached. I notice cuts and bruises on the children. I can't help but wonder if they will really make it here. If not, I'd rather avoid further heartache. I've managed to build a fire for us and some palm beddings on the floor. It's not much, but it's something. We found some food amongst the wreckage so far and have been sustaining ourselves, though I worry about the rations. Claire keeps saying they'll find us in no time, but I have my doubts. Still, her optimism is a small comfort in this madness. Part 3. Reality sets in. It's been over a week since the crash and reality is starting to set in. The initial hope that we'd be rescued quickly is fading. The food we scavenged from the wreckage is running low. I've started rationing what little we have left, but it's not going to last much longer. Claire, a 26-year-old medical student, has been doing her best to keep everyone patched up with the first aid supplies we found. She was on her way back home to Chicago. The kids, Tommy, age 9, Jake, age 7, and Emma, uh, Emma from some of the bottled notes, age 5, were on a trip to visit their grandma. Their parents didn't survive the crash. Today, I spent most of my time searching for the wreckage again, hoping to find something we missed. I managed to salvage a few more cans of food and a couple of bottles of water. It's not enough, but it's something. I also found another first aid kit, which we desperately needed. My head is still pounding, but at least we have some basic supplies. Claire and I finally had a serious conversation about the situation. She wants to organise a search party to look for more survivors and supplies. I'm reluctant to leave the crash site, but she's right. We can't stay here forever. The plane is still too dangerous to go near, with smoking and occasional small fires flaring up. Staying close to it isn't an option, but venturing into the unknown is just as terrifying. The kids have started crying again, their initial shock giving way to fear and hunger. Every little sound sets them off at night, making it hard for any of us to sleep. They no longer believe Claire when she tells them we'll be rescued soon. It's heartbreaking to see the hope drain from their eyes. I've begun to think about how we'll need to adapt to survive here long term. The idea of building a more permanent shelter 
and finding sustainable food sources is becoming more urgent. I've decided to keep a journal to record my memories in case I start to forget more. Good thing I packed one. Every night the sounds of the islands grow louder. The wind through the trees, the rustling of leaves and the distant calls of unknown animals. Unnerving. I lie awake, staring at the stars, wondering if anyone is looking for us, but I try to remember more about the flight, but it's all fragments. My wife's face is the only clear memory and it feels like a lifetime ago. I don't know how much longer we can hold out like this. We need a plan and we need it soon. Tomorrow we'll start exploring beyond the wreckage. I hope we find something, anything, that can help us survive a little longer. And the last one, the choice. Today, we found an emergency raft washed up on the shore, along with the body of another survivor. The raft is a lifeline, a chance to escape this island and search for more resources or even rescue, but it's also a risk. Claire and I stood over the body, the reality of our situation sinking in even deeper. We can use this to get to the near nearby island, I said, my voice grim. We're running out of resources here, we need to move. Claire shook her head, worry etched on her face. Logan. It's too dangerous. We've seen sharks in these waters. What if something happens? What if the raft doesn't hold? I felt frustration boiling over. We don't have a choice, Claire. We can't stay here and slowly starve. I'm going. You can stay here with the kids if you want, but I'm taking that raft. The argument escalated quickly. Claire, usually so calm, yelled back, her voice cracking. You can't just abandon us. What if something happens to you? What then? We need you here, Logan. The kids need you. I was caught off guard by the intensity of her emotions and my own frustration fueled my response. And what if staying here kills us all? We can't keep pretending everything will be okay if we just sit tight. We need to take risks. She brought it down, tears streaming down her face. I can't do this alone, Logan. You're so distant, always keeping to yourself. You never spend time with us, never play with the kids. It's dragging me down. I'm trying so hard, but I can't do it without you. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut. I hadn't realised how much my detachment was affecting her, affecting all of them. I felt my own emotions rising, a mix of guilt and something I hadn't allowed myself to acknowledge. I'm sorry, I said, my voice softer. I'm so sorry, Claire. I didn't realise. I stayed with her that night. We sat by the fire and for the first time she shared her hopes and dreams. She talked about her life before the crash, her plans to become a doctor, her love for her family. She told me how she could see that I was distant. Oh, I never spent time with them than I, than I had to. Oh, never spent more time with them than I had to. And how it was dragging her down, trying to be the only one to emotionally support the entire team. As she spoke, I realised how much I had come to care for her. My heart broke at the thought of losing her, of failing her and the kids. I reached out, pulling her into an embrace. We held each other, seeking warmth and comfort in the cold night. For the first time, I let myself feel something other than survival instincts. I let myself care. That night, as we cuddled together for warmth, I felt a shift. Claire's words had opened my eyes. I knew we couldn't stay here forever. But rushing... Oh, my sanity is low, bloody hell. Rushing into danger wasn't the answer either. We needed a plan, a way to ensure our safety while searching for a better place. Tomorrow, we'll reassess. We'll find a way to make this work, together. Because in this nightmare, they're the only thing keeping me grounded and I can't lose them, and that scared me the most. Wow, okay, so plenty going on there, on this beach, well, this island, should I say, including the blueprints that we found. I just need to get out of here. Um, uh, let's just do that one. Oh, no, grab that. Turn, 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 turn. This is the thing, you get beached so quickly here, man. Bloody hell. Um, I'm going to nip over to the home island, or the previous base, so to speak. Try and get some sleep, I think, because that will probably restore my sanity. Well, I keep saying I'm going to go back to the home island, and I keep getting distracted <laughs> by other... That was me picking up the stick. <laughs> by other islands that I'm seeing. Now, I've got to be careful here, because there were two sharks that were really, really interested in me coming over on the boat, so I don't want them creeping in here. But this is definitely something new. We've not been this one before. Message in a bottle. Note from a survivor, that's perfect. 
and something really odd floating in this ancient vase. Very nice. Look at that. Greek or Roman pottery. It's just, I don't want to, I'll place it down. I don't want to <laughs> drop it and smash a priceless Roman vase. Oh shit. Right, let's try my best. Yes, I got it. What was that? Wolf spider. Try and do that with Black Widow though. <laughs> I'll run out of run out of arrows before you know it. Okay, there's a weird little island there that I really want to get to. Look at that. It's like submerged, basically. Um Got to be something around here, right? I know we've got the message in a bottle there. I am just gonna quickly go back to my spear. Copper ore. I don't need to start mining the copper, but I don't have the skills to do anything quite with it yet. Blueprint for a leather chair. Nice. Do need to kind of build a little bit of a proper home. And then we've got a, a chair that we can sit at now with our leather chair. Oh, blueprint here, though. A jaguar spear. Wow, how good does that sound? Uh, what is this... Uh, Oh, it's a reef. Out of a reef. Uh, right, okay, there's not a great deal on this island then, is there? Um, let's just quickly get a drink. There, right, cool. Run it, I really need that. Anything in here? Any notes? Oh! <laughs> right, we've got two now. Let's quickly check these out, eh? Get over near the boat. Let's see what we've got here. Two bottled notes, wasn't it? Bottled notes. Uh, here we go. Blakewood Chronicles. Day one. We set sail from the port of London with high hopes and dreams of discovering the fabled lands rumoured to lie across the vast Pacific. Our fleet of three merchant ships, laden with precious goods and driven by the spirit of adventure, did push forth into the unknown. As the captain of the lead ship, I, Captain Edward Blackwood, did bear the weight of this mission upon my shoulders. Day 15. Sea hath been kind to us uh, thus far. We have encountered favourable winds and calm waters. I love the spelling of this, by the way. This is like very, um, kind of, I was going to say... Uh, Victorian, it won't be Victorian, will it? Probably like Elizabethan England, Elizabeth I. Um, they used to put E's on a lot of words like that, didn't they? So, very much Elizabethan times, this I'm guessing. Uh, our crew of 100 men, including seasoned sailors and merchants, are in good spirits. They speak of the riches that await us in the undiscovered lands, tales passed down through generations, and the honour of being the first to establish trade with these mythical regions. The mood aboard the ship hath shifted. We have entered uncharted waters and the sea hath become unpredictable. Storms do batter ships and whispers of discontent spreads among the men. Some question the existence of these fabled, fabled lands, claiming they are but myths. Tensions rise as supplies begin to dwindle. The first signs of mutiny did appear today. A small group of sailors, led by a man named Henry, openly challenged my authority. They accused me of leading them to their deaths and demanded we turn back. I ordered Henry to be confined to the brig, hoping to quell the unrest. But the seeds of rebellion have already been sown. The situation has worsened. Henry's followers have grown in number and their whispers of mutiny have turned into open defiance. I had no choice but to make an example of Henry. He was brought on deck, his hands bound and sentenced to hang in a cage suspended from the mast. His cries of betrayal echoed through the night, a grim reminder of the price of treason. Henry's execution has had a, don't know, chilling, chilling effect on the crew? God knows. The rebellion has been stifled for now, but the air is thick with fear and distrust. We continue our journey, but the spirit of adventure that once filled our hearts has been replaced by a growing sense of dread. The sea, once our ally, now feels like a vast, inescapable prison. This is William Hargrove, still stranded on this godforsaken island. It's been weeks, maybe months, since I last wrote, and our situation has only grown more dire. Our food supplies have dwindled to almost nothing, 
and fresh water sources are drying up. The island's eerie curse seems to tighten its grip on us daily. The strange sounds at night have become more frequent, and now some of us claim to hear whispers. Our fires continue to be extinguished without reason, plunging us into darkness. The sense of being watched is overwhelming, and it's driving us to the edge of madness. We've made several attempts to build a raft and escape, but the sea is relentless. Each time, our makeshift vessels are destroyed by the violent waves. Hope is fading fast, and morale is at an all-time low. We argue more than ever, and some of the men have simply wandered into the jungle, never to return. I found more evidence of those who came before us, bones scattered among the trees, rusted tools and scraps of clothing. It's a stark reminder that escape is a distant dream. Still, I hold on to a sliver of hope that this letter might reach someone. If you find this, know that we are desperate. We need help. Please alert the authorities and send a rescue party. We cannot hold on much longer, and I fear what will become of us if this torment continues. With fading hope, William Hargrove. A lot of desperation in a lot of these notes, isn't there? We're actually nearly there with the bottled notes, 80%. But there is a lot of desperation, like I say, isn't there? People are really struggling. Um, and in bad bad shape really aren't they um, imagine doing that though kind of oh blueprint over there all you can do is put a note in a bottle and just hope for the best crab spear nice right before we finish up we are going to quickly just sail over there see what's there if anything and then we'll wrap this episode up I think I've got a plan what I want to do um for the next one, or kind of in between. Oh God, I'm going to sink here. In between, uh, I need to work on that range skill, like I say, which is really something that I want to go for. Um, and then I can make that crossbow. And once I've made the crossbow, I can hopefully get underwater and start shooting some sharks because there's some bits underwater that I need to go and look at as well. Remember the submarine from episode one or two? <laughs> We want to get there, we want to see what's there. So let's go over to this island, I can see a shark already so this might be dangerous. Let's head over there, see what's what. Oh there's two of them, oh my god. Nothing. Nothing here at all. Oh hang on, oh no. Let's get out of here. Oh god. Keep turning. Oh no. Right, while I figure out how to get out of this mess. <laughs> That is where we are going to leave it for today, guys. I've got a bit of a plan, like I say. So if you've enjoyed this one, drop a like. If I've missed anything, as always, please let me know in the comments. If I've missed any bottles or post that notes you've spotted, please let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, as always, I'd be extremely grateful if you could do so. But for now, while I am desperately trying to avoid the sharks <laughs> on a sinking ship, I'll see you in the next one. Catch you then.